Now, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Do you recognize that? Well, this is uh, 2 Corinthians and the verse that ended the statement that produced by a conference to mark 30 years since the first Kairos document of 1985. This week, different theologians from different denominations gathered in Johannesburg to remember this particular moment. One of the original contributing theologians, the Reverend Frank Chikani, joins us in studio now. It's an honor to have you and welcome to the program. Good, good morning. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Let's go back to this original speech. I mean, it was made yeah. uh, back in 1985. It was uh, basically a challenge to the church during apartheid. Mm. Take us back to what inspired you and your colleagues to come up with this document. You know, if for those who are old, I will remember yeah. that 1985 was the height of the crisis in the country into 1986, state of emergency, lots of people detained, lots of people killed. Um, um, it, it was actually the worst of our experiences. You'll remember also the leadership of the United Democratic Front. All of it was arrested and were charged for treason. I was one of those who was charged for treason. And when I came back after they had paid bail for me, the churches did and the communities collected the money. We had to ask the question, where is God in this situation? Because we took our faith too seriously, maybe. And uh, the question was, we know that apartheid is evil. We know it's immoral, but where's God? Yeah. And the next question was, where is the church? So if you look at the document, you'll see it's not a critique of apartheid. It's a critique of the church, that there were churches who, are, who are associated themselves with what we call state theology. They were just there to support apartheid, justify it in theologically and defend it. There were others who were liberal, who felt it was evil, but nevertheless, they didn't do anything to remove it. Yeah. And we believe that you needed prophetic voices that will make sure that the pain of the people comes to an end. And that's what the Kairos document was about. And it's amazing that this, 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 this original Kairos document has given birth to so many other yeah. movements that are still in place today. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what's happening in 2015, the Kairos movement of 2015? Well, I must say that, I mean, when we did all that, we're just moved by the Spirit of God to find solutions to our problems. But actually, we never thought we'll have an impact in the world. Now, it's quite extraordinary. Once we published it, it caught fire. It has now influenced many people around the world. There are Kairos documents all over the world in Europe, African countries. And now there is the latest, you know, Kairos Palestine. And when we gathered at the conference, we had Kairos USA already. And, it, and that's, for me, the power of witness that you experience in a particular area can impact on other people and change the way they think. Yeah. You know, the, the 30th celebration spoke of a new Kairos focused on, on a common humanity and a concern yeah. for human dignity and our environment. That's what it says. What do we mean? Yeah. What, what are we wanting to achieve? No, in 85, we're focusing on our situation. Yeah. But in 2015, we are looking at the global world, all the Kairos documents that have been produced out of pain and sufferings of people. And we are now talking about the common humanity, that God is a God of everyone. We are all made in the image of God. No one group of people should be oppressed by others. And that's what is it's, we are talking about, common humanity, one God, and a common concern about the created reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, also reports of the pain of Marikana and the reasons behind it hovering over the conference. What was said about this? You see, Marikana represents these contradictions that we face all over the world. I mean, there's so much war in the world. I mean, there's war in Syria, Iraq. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable. And, and Marikana is just an expression of that. And so meeting during August... Americana became alive during the conference where we met uh, in Johannesburg here and everybody else rallied around it. But the key issue for me is how do we change the world? How do we get rid of what we call the software 
the hardware, it's the military, it's the power and states, but the software is the justification of what these people are doing through theological concepts yeah. that justified apartheid and we are justified the same. If you take, for instance, the Middle East, it's the place where the scriptures were produced, but it is the place where religions contest against each other. And we need to end that and say, this is about people, it's not about ethnic groups or, or some tribal group, but it is about God and the people who are suffering. All right, thank you so much for joining us here on the program. It's always a pleasure talking to the Reverend Frank Chikani, contributor to the Kairos documents, uh, a summit being held uh, in Johannesburg to remember this particular movement back in 1985. Thank you so much for talking to us here on the program. Let's take a break. We'll see you after this. Stay tuned.